food defines culture, a sense of place, of home, and belonging. Philly is known for cheesesteak, hoagies, pretzel, but that's old news. Within the immigrant pocket of the city lies a culinary world that you won't know exist until you search for it. When I moved to the States, I started bringing my own home-cooked food to school. I didn't feel like my friends were really excited to try that food. Nobody was trying to, you know, switch their pudding cups with my food. It just was another place where we weren't able to connect. Um, that was like a missed chance. I started a pop-up dinner series called That Pickles John, which is a play off one of my favorite dishes, pickles, and also as an ode to Philly, using the word that any or most of Philadelphians would know. This banana right here, you know, I can be like, you want one of these Johns? I primarily like using red cabbage, which is different from most pickles you see in Haiti. Chefs will use they use white cabbage. I always like to do things a little differently. To see people when they have a bite of food, that feels very humbling to know that my food can make somebody have that experience. The beauty of making this food has been this search going deeper into my own history as well as being comfortable enough to share that food with people I feel much more connected. For me, when I was a kid, it was more like, I'm weird and different. Oh, wow. But then it was until later on, it was like, wow, that made me unique and maybe even special. Right now we're running a series called Lakai PHL, which is sort of a, something that came up a little bit from the pandemic, I thought like, hey, you know, if I'm gonna do anything while I'm free, might as well go back to my, my roots, which is Asian cuisine. A lot of it I haven't made. You know, some of it's a lot really coming off of memory. Things I ate during childhood, things uh, I watched my mom make, I watched my grandmother make, and now I'm sort of experimenting with it, trying to get back to that flavor. You know, it's kind of working backwards because you know, obviously I've cooked for 16 years, so I have all this sort of refined cooking experience from a ton of European cuisines and a lot of things that you think that's the way you do it. And then when you kind of hit that Caribbean uh, cooking, a lot of things change. This dish in particular is uh, something that's served at the beach. It's usually actually with conks which I did last year, some citrus, and it's served with uh, timalis, which is a sauce It like kicks you in the mouth, essentially, as in the spice levels. You're gonna get a nice little kick, the fiery burn from the shrimp, and then some peppers and onions to kind of cool it down. Oh, almost lost one, no problem. The term bucane, which uh, came from the Tanyo uh, Arawax, uh, you know, pre-Columbian period is uh, essentially burning, cooking on fire, which is how a lot of cooking is done in Haiti. So every time I do a pop-up and there's a grill, you know, I always try to include that somewhere. You know, when you think of French cooking, you're never supposed to put acid on, uh, on red meat or anything. I always say in Haitian cuisine, you know, we kind of kill the meat multiple times. As in this case, you know, the pork we have here, we actually, uh, we cook it three times, you know, so it's, you're washing in acid, salt, lime, and then you marinate overnight with ipis, which is sort of like our, our general Haitian season for everything. And we braise, sort of boil, and then we're portioning, frying once, and then we fry in order. So it's almost four times actually, but you know, the concept of thinking like, oh my God, it would be really tough. It's actually not, you know, whatever that science is, 
Uh, I haven't figured out, but you know, we're doing a lot of unconventional things that build flavor in a different way than what I was trained, you know, from culinary school and all the places I've worked at. So got the greens, some kale, some collard greens, some tomatoes, and also a beautiful flower called Belle de Nuit. My grandmother would plant them and now they just um, have really deep roots and come up every year. No matter where I'm at in the world, like I was in South Africa in Soweto and I saw Belle de Nuit and just immediately thought of my grandmother. I am a research scientist by training. I earned my PhD in public health sciences, particularly prevention science and community health. Both of my parents were born and raised in IET in Haiti. Although I was born and raised in Philadelphia, I would say my Haitian roots, my cultural heritage was really instilled in me early on, um, just naturally from hearing Haitian Creole throughout the household. The food we ate was still very cultural to this day. Continuing to prepare and consume our cultural traditions. It's really been a major part of my upbringing and my identity and it continues to keep me grounded. Just snacking, very pungent. Mmm, there's almost like a sweetness to that. If you have the space to cultivate a garden, it doesn't even have to be outdoors, just even some basic herbs. We like to season our food with pesci, parsley, giraffe, cloves, all types of herbs that really do have scientifically supported health benefits. It's also really beautiful to share the garden with um, my family and friends, especially um, my parents, particularly my dad. Every time like, we're, I plan something new or we share that experience, like he has this light bulb memory from being back in Haiti. Tears swell up in his eyes as he has these flashbacks and channels them and shares them with me. My favorite thing in Haiti is to go when the seasons are aligned with like my favorite fruit. There's a saying like when it's mango season, no one goes hungry because the land is really able to feed. All of these natural products that are homegrown really have such great health benefits. And so if we're able to tap into that, even when we are outside of Haiti, um, for instance, in the United States, it may be a little bit more challenging to access some of these tropical foods, but there still are outlets and there still are sort of alternatives that we can make sure that we're integrating into our lifestyle to really support our health and wellness and to remind us of home. <laughs>